Okay, so welcome to uh, BAFCA's uh, coaching convention this year, obviously a virtual con convention, uh, and we're delighted to be joined today by Coach Anthony Stone um, from uh, Back to Basics uh, Football. So Coach Stone is obviously um, really focused on the fundamental side of uh, football, and that's something that we are um, really um, pushing from a BAFCA point of view as well, because if we can't um, do the basics very well, then uh, all those kind of X's and O's uh, are a bit pointless, really. So um, without further ado, Coach Stone, over to you. And uh, thank you very much for spending your time with us today. No, thank you very much for having me. Uh, let me share my screen and get this up and running. Okay, so my topic today is football fundamentals, like Coach Hill said. And I want to thank you very much, Coach Hill and Bafka for letting me uh, present today. Uh, it's fundam football fundamentals, back to the basics, uh, Coach Stone football, learning triangle, and Coach Stone football arch. Okay. My name's Coach Anthony Stone. Um, I've been there before a couple years ago, and you'll see that in a little bit. I'm going to touch base, and I'm just going to go through an outline. Um, if you know me or heard me speak before, I'm very set on my details and things like that. So before I begin, I want to thank all the coaches that have coached me as a player, coached against me or coached with me. Without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I want to thank everyone very much. These are the places I've been at or worked for before. Uh, right now, if you see, there's, there's, a, there's an old coaching association one there. I was back in 2016. I came over. Uh, Coach John Wise got uh, USA Football to come over to, it was the first time we implemented uh, Heads Up Football there. Uh, and that was when I brought over George Teague and a couple other guys for that program. Uh, you also see in the middle grid in Australia. I'll talk about that in a second. I've been with them for the last couple of years doing some stuff. I am currently at Rockford Boylan. It's in the top area. Uh, that's where I am a quarterbacks coach and running backs coach for the varsity level. I'm also the offensive co-offensive coordinator and up in the box on Friday nights. I combined my love for teaching and passion to create Coach Stone Football in the spring of 2007. If you want to, you can go to coachstonefootball.com. My purpose of my company, I created my Back to the Basics Football Drill Manual series uh, and football camps to teach skills and techniques to improve players' confidence through the basic skills while having fun. Uh, new in 2020, I created a football coaching accreditation program for Gridiron Australia. It has already launched, phase one has already launched. Phase two will be coming out later this year. Fundamentals, lay a foundation while utilize a necessary skill set to become a better athlete. That's one thing I'd always tell people. If the kids are not having fun at practice, and I don't know if Coach Wayne, if you've ever seen this, but the biggest thing is like, when you go to practice, a lot of practices overseas or things like that, or semi-pro teams, five or six kids show up, right? But when game time comes, all 80 kids show up. And the biggest thing what my company does and what, what I do, for example, in my whatever thing I do, I will show if only five kids show up and it's a horrible practice, then the following day or whatever, the following week, only four kids show up. But what I do is make sure it's always inclusive. There's no gospel talking, maximum participation, everyone moving around. Oops. I want to personally thank each coach here today for making a difference in the lives of players, both on and off the field. That's the biggest thing I would say to everyone that's listening. You, you do this for a passion. You do this for the love. It's like a drug, I would say. So I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. First tip, don't sit in a meeting and tell me what a player cannot do. Okay. What well, we don't, we can't use in a player. Tell me, what they can't do certain things, tell me what they can do, and then let's figure out as coaches, because it's our job, and that's how we use that. That's our responsibility. Everyone has something they can do. I mean, that's the biggest thing I would take away. Back in the day when I was little, little Jimmy, little Billy would be ran off, okay, or that kid be running around the laps all these times, no matter what age level they are. You'd make them run. Nowadays, you can't do that just with participation numbers, and with everything going on, 
You can't, you'd be afraid to do that. You know, Joe Judge said that from the New York Giants. He's, he was a special teams coordinator at the New England Patriots, but that's one thing he said in his, one of his first press conferences, and I thought that was the greatest tip I ever saw. So, like I said, again, if anything you do, whenever you listen to all these clinics, make sure you get a couple tips every time. Don't try to change stuff like you'll see in a second. Just make sure you find something that, that's a little gold nugget that you can put into your program. The second tip, and this is what I would say to you if we had a live audience, the biggest thing to do, always ask questions. That's the biggest thing you have to understand. When someone's talking, it might be the greatest thing and butter for that program, but you, you might not have those thoroughbreds. You might not be able to do this with that. Even though you want to do it, you might not be able to do it. So the biggest thing I would say whenever you do a clinic, ask questions. You know, ask a question. Even if it's the smallest thing, ask the question because you never know if they ever get back to you. Now, they might say they get back to you, but you know how it is. Some coaches that are good speakers, they are so swamped sometimes, and especially with everything going on and people starting back up and not starting back up, they don't have that time for you possibly. So ask questions while you're at a meeting and definitely shoot emails right after you're done. Here's the outline of what we're going to do today. We talked about the intro. We talked a little bit by myself, um, the informational resources, the why, the impact of a coach, why kids should play sports. It should be everyone, like I put in the thing. A coaching activity that we'll have Coach Hill demonstrate with a coaching vehicle. Failure is okay. Everyone learns differently. The Coach Stone football clue, the Coach Stone football learning triangle, the Coach Stone arch, and the football resources in closing. Why do they all say Coach Stone? Because that's what my wife said it had to be. And if you have a wonderful significant other, you listen to them so you know you don't sleep on the couch every night. Okay. This is what I would say to you. Next time you go to a clinic, okay, you either do two things. Take a screenshot of this, or you can always go buy my Back to the Basics Football Clinic notebook. <laughs> okay, so here's what you do, okay? When you go to a clinic, FBI means this, and this is the funniest thing I always said. I learned this from my old college coach, my first college coach when I was a GA. Football intelligence. You write down before you go to a clinic, what do you do now successful? At Rockford Boylan, we run the jet sweep. Is that day one insertion? No, it's not. Why is it not? Because we're already good at it. If you're in practices and stuff like that, don't run a play 17,000 times or 17 times or whatever number you run if you're already great at it. Run something that you need to work on. When you're at a clinic, what do you need to learn? You need to learn quarterback drills. Go to a guy that says quarterback drills. Don't go for RPOs if you're looking for quarterback drills because you never ran RPO before, okay? What can you add to your program realistically? Because if you can't add it realistically, then there's no point of going. Now, I know you want to hear some famous person speak or something, but if you're not doing it, if you're just doing it for that, you could be doing other things. The one thing I love doing at clinics, if I, if I meet a coach that I've had or seen before, or I had a question with him and he, he's done speaking and he wants to talk afterwards and get a little coffee or a little snack, you know, and just ask him some questions and some coaches want to do that, like myself, then do that. You can learn more from there than going to see someone famous speak just so you're in that room. I know I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not knocking anybody that's presenting. I'm not knocking anybody that's presented before and past here or wherever. But if it's not realistic to your program, sometimes it's not worth it. Why do we coach? It's very simple. We coach for many reasons. There's a stack of money, right? There's a cell phone. There's a bus for some reason. And then there's free time. Why do we coach? We don't do it for the huge paycheck. I guarantee you don't. If we do that, we'd all be division one coaches right now. We use it for our kids or our athletes using our cell phone. Because back in the day, if you remember about three years ago, four years ago, we didn't have unlimited plans. And how many times have you, if you did coach youth football, how many times have you had to use that phone to, to call a parent saying, hey, you're late? Because sometimes the kids just drop them off, the parents just drop them off, and then come back two hours later. Or how many times had you had to take someone, the coach bus, picking some up at home, or taking somebody home? 
And then free time. What else are you going to do with your free time? Always said, you know, like, oh, I got all this free time. What am I going to do with it? We don't coach because that. We coach because of this, the priceless moments. Seeing someone do something they can't do on day one to up here when day three comes is priceless. It's like a MasterCard commercial, I would say. So that's the biggest thing what I would tell you. Coach for the priceless moments. I mean, that's already three things you could have learned from me. Later on, you're going to be guaranteed a couple things for sure. So if you haven't got a tip yet, if you haven't got your one tip yet, your two tips, you already got one out of those three. Impact of a coach. I took this a long time ago from Billy Graham. I think it's awesome. A coach will impact more young people in a year than the average person does in a lifetime. And that is one thing awesome. If you're a teacher, you know it's the same thing. And as teachers, we have to think about this. There are reasons why we don't name our kids certain people. So think about that. If you are a teacher right now and you're like, and your wife or significant other is pregnant and you're like, okay, let's name that kid Voldemort. Well, you know, as a teacher, Voldemort is that name we do never speak of, right? I'm not going to give any names, right? But I'm just saying, I would never name my kid Voldemort on that. Now all the kids are going to be named Co, COVID, you know, virus, virusy, you know, that's where they're all going to be. Because I saw a thing on social media, at least two, uh, I gave it to my buddy that's just got recently married. I gave him a little baby and it had on the, on the t-shirt of the baby, it says, parents did not stay six feet apart, you know? So it's just something to think about, okay? Let's start learning now. Why should you play sports? That's very simple. Uh, in the UK, Believe Performance HQ is awesome. Okay, they're on Twitter, uh, social media, everything. These are the things they say why we should do it, okay? Teamwork, that's huge. Communication, growth, emotion, tenacity, coping, re resilience. I can't even speak because it's so early in the morning. Leadership, learning, determination, pressure, concentration, commitment, goal setting, and motivation. If you think about it, that's even like for a teacher. You know, why should kids come to school? They learn all these things every day. So if you ever have a parent go, well, I don't know if my son should do it. You show them these 15 things. Trust me, it's well worth it in the long run. Okay. A lot of our relationships, Coach Hill and myself, we met through football. You know, there, so I wouldn't be here right now today if I didn't meet Coach Hill. Okay, a little activity for you. I know it's hard because we're all virtual, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be very honest with you. Try it. Just see what it is. You know, you're going to be like, you know, Coach Stone, you haven't even started teaching us yet. Only just, just did that one thing. But listen, I'm all about having fun and learning something new. And I guarantee you've already learned something new. Here, you're going to learn something definitely. So you can't say I didn't learn two things. What coaching vehicle are you? Okay. What type of vehicle for learning are you during the football season? And it could be different when you're not in the football season. When you're a teacher, you do whatever. Okay. So here we go. You must pick one, remember. And remember, you can always do it. And Coach, Went, Coach Hill, what are the hashtags for the, um, for the uh, conference this week? Uh, it's going to be BAFCA um, Virtual 2020. Okay, so BAFCA Virtual 2020. Use the hashtag, post your vehicle. You know, show everyone that you've listened to this. Because I've only had five people probably right now, if that. Here we go. You must choose one of these vehicles, okay? Coach Hill, I don't mean to use you as an example, but you're the only one here. That's good. <laughs> so That's no if you look at the vehicles here, these are your vehicles to choose from, okay? Are you a motorcycle, a Suzuki? Are you an SUV type coach? Are you a minivan type coach? Are you a luxury sedan? Are you a heavy duty truck? Or are you a hybrid economy car, okay? That's the thing you gotta think of. Coach Hill, I'm just going to give you a minute. I'm going to keep talking. You think about your six vehicles. And don't be like some coaches I, I do when I do Zooms. They're like, oh, I want that car. You can't get don't, – don't say you're that car because you want that car. Think about the car you are because that's what it's about when you coach. On your staff, you have different types of vehicles. They're learning vehicles. You all know everyone on here. When you see the examples, you'll be like, oh, that's this coach. Oh, that's that coach. Oh, that's that coach. And that, if you have a cars for, if you have six members on your staff and you have six different cars of learning, vehicles of learning, trust me, I'm telling you right now, 
You're going to have a great season. You ready, Coach Hill? Yeah, I'm ready, Coach. Oh, uh, here we go. So once, if, once I say one, if you're it, Coach, you say it is. If not, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read them. I'm going to probably paraphrase them, but you'll be able to see them on the screen when we read them. Here we go. The results are in. Ready? And you got your one, right? Yes, Coach. Can you, can you write it down so we know we're, we're no one's cheating? And Like, I'm not a magician. I'm not a magician or nothing, but maybe I could probably be like, that's yours, but I won't be like that. I usually do that when I do these things, but we won't do that right now. Okay, you got it? So yeah. you cannot lie now. It's like, you know, I can't change my answer now. So here we go. Ready? The motorcycle. If you're, and you're not a motorcycle. Am I right by saying that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm already one for one, but I won't, I'll stop there. Right. I'm already at hundred percent. It's like when I'm doing quarterback drills with my quarterbacks yesterday, we're doing a drill and I showed them how to throw the ball over the uh, field goal post into a garbage can. And I'm like, listen, it's very simple. So I did the first one. I dropped back, threw it right in the garbage can. You know what he says to me? Beginner's luck. And I'm like, oh, okay. You realize I didn't warm up. And he's like, yeah, I know coach. Well, let me throw it again, throw it again. And guess what? Guess where it went, Wayne? Second one in. No, it actually hit the garbage can and bounced <laughs> out, but it's okay. <laughs> so pretty when, good. When he throws it, he's throwing it. It's like all over the place. It's like, it's like this. It's like missiles. Uh, me, I go boom, and then it goes boop, boop, and it pops out. But it like hit the side of it. It didn't hit the end and pop out. I want to make sure that's truthful. So if he does hear this. Motorcycles are agile. They can take the curves the players and parents throw at them. Okay? So that's if you're a motorcycle coach. You know someone on your team coaching staff that's like a motorcycle they're very agile they move around they're running around they're that coach where like the whistle blows for two whistle drill and they run to it right and then all of a sudden they see a parent and they're like mm, you know i'm going that way i'm good you know i'm good i'm gonna stay away from them. next one i'm not gonna say nothing wayne i'm not gonna say this is not you or you so just don't don't give up your tell with your eyes suvs are all-terrain vehicles they can take it to the highway or off-road just like you have to be balanced, staying focused on the field, but take time for your teaching te teachable moments, okay? Next one, are you ready? Minivan, you're not the minivan coach. Am I right by saying that? Yeah, Look at that's right. two. I'm, I got two down, look at that, bam. You could pack everyone into the minivan. Everyone is comfortable on a road trip. You don't leave anybody behind on the football field. That's like your, your old school coach, right? If uh, Coach Marco from uh, in Texas, he's got all those different coaches. This is that coach that won't retire. This is that coach right there that won't retire. That's that type of coach right there. Heavy duty truck, okay, can take a beating and keep on hauling. Coaches do a lot of heavy lifting during the football season and carry a lot of emotional burden for their players. Okay, I'm gonna say you're not a heavy duty truck. Am I right? No, you're wrong. I thought I was. Oh, I knew truck. it. I That's knew so it. Nice. So you're the heavy duty truck. Great. Okay, here we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Great. Luxury sedan. Okay. Not only provide a smooth ride, but they look good doing it. The best coaches can finesse any content and provide a high quality coaching experience. And the next one, the economy car are the way of the future. Hybrid coaches are flexible, creative, and they know the differential and maximum learning time, okay? So those are the different ones, okay? What do you think, Coach Hill? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's great. I really, really like that. I just, um, yeah. nice to be able to pick bits from different um, cars and that as well, so. Um, That's what someone says too, yes. Yeah, so for me, it was the, the heavy duty truck was like re reliable, um, always working, uh, really hard working, uh, and that's really kind of where I saw myself as that heavy duty truck, so. Perfect. But, the luxury, 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 luxury sedan and the hybrid are, are definitely uh, parts of the, that car as well. Got it. Awesome. See, I, I didn't think, I thought you were going to be either two, uh, four, or six. That's what I thought it was. Wait, one, two, oh. three. Yeah, so those are the ones I, I tried to guess right off the bat. And here's the thing, too. Do this with your wife. So coaches, with your wife or your significant other, ask them. Go, hey, during the football season, what type of vehicle am I when I come home? Because here's the thing too, use your, use your significant other as a support system. Because guess what? If they come to the game, they're going to hear all the junk going on about you. And you know that happens. It's kind of like a principal at school. Okay. Is it okay to fail? People are like, oh, this is going to be ridiculous. No, it's okay. It's okay to fail. You know why? 
because it's this. It's your first attempt in learning. Failure, failure is okay, because here's what you don't want. You don't want a kid or an athlete to get upset, and some of them cannot come back from it. It's like a turtle shell. So if you ever had that athlete that was a turtle shell, you know you were always walking on eggshells with him or her. You need to understand what type of player you are coaching. Take a moment, let it sink in. We've been trained to think, think anything less than perfection is not acceptable. But if we don't make mistakes, how can we learn? I remember the stories and I, I wasn't one of these guys, but when I was little, I would see someone get something wrong or miss a tackle like in one-on-one -on -one drills, you know, like this, where that's the first type of tackling in Oklahoma. You mess up, they'd make you run a couple laps, you'd come back, do the same thing, and then guess what? You never taught the person. All you taught them was to not like football and you made them a marathon runner. Don't do that. Teach them something. If the guy doesn't run in the hole right, you know, that's on you. Get a, get a fire hose, build it, show them. At our practice at Boylan, we do the VARC, you know, and if Coach Hill ever wants me to come back, I would love to teach the VARC that I, that I patented and everything. So it's awesome. Visual, audio, read and write, and kinesthetic. That's how you learn a play. That's how you teach the four things. Here's why you do that. Everyone learns different. You see it right here. Look, it's the VARC. Okay, the reason why I made my football drill manual series is because student and coaches have different types of learning styles. Okay, Coach Hill is a great point, myself a great point. I don't know if you did Coach Hill, but when we were learned a long time ago, the quarterback was number one, is that right for you? The fullback was number three, and the tailback was number two. So it looked like this, right? But if you count for a kid nowadays, one, three, Two does not make sense. Why isn't it one, two, three? And don't be like, well, that's how I learned. Yes, I know. We were all backwards back in the day. We also would run through a wall. Or now we don't, now if we tell a kid to run through a wall or an athlete to run a wall, I'm going to tell my mommy on you. That's what they're going to do to you. Okay. Use these four things the visual, the audio, the read and write, and the kinesthetic. Trust me, if you use those four things, your team will be way better. I recommend incorporating different types of learning teaching methods to communicate effectively with your players. So that will cover the different learning styles listed above. I created these on the next page. These are awesome, okay? We don't have to go through every one, but I'll show you, okay? You have many different ways just in these boxes to do stuff. You know, you could practice stuff at home. I'm just not, I'm not going down each one every, I'm just gonna pick some. You can do review cards. Just like kids do review cards with multiplication facts, you can make review cards with, with, like you can put them on Google Forms, Google Slides, whatever you want to do, and they can do tests for formations and things like that. You can play with a team aspect. Coaching assessment stations. You know, as your coaches, have them create manuals. Have them do stuff, you know. Skill sheets. How do you know where a player's at? You might just look at a player and be like, well, I've been coaching for 30 years. That player is an offensive lineman. That player is this. Well, what happens if they can help with more things? You know, verbal cues. Do they learn by using verbal cues? Are they more when you show them it by doing physical cues? What happens if I model for you or you model for another player, player and player modeling, things like that? These are all things you can take from your strategy bank, and I recommend you use them all. Use the Coach Stone Learning Triangle too. So that's what we're going to next after the clue, okay? As coaches, we're always looking for the next big thing, right? Like how do we understand and retain knowledge? Listen, no matter if you're a national team coach or from all the way down to a youth coach, kids learn differently. Find out what they know. Listen, I understand everyone knows how to play Madden. And you, I know you have a coach that's on your staff that's like, oh, I know everything because I know Madden. Don't be that person, okay? Give them the questions. What do you know about football for the clue? What do you actually know, okay? Like if I ask someone, how many line of scrimmages are on the field? Everyone's gonna say the number one. Well, there's not one line of scrimmage. 
Because if this is the football, and that's the offensive line of scrimmage, right? Can the defense go into the neutral zone? No. So there's two lines right here. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, get you mad at me. Because remember, if you don't like me, you know who I am. Because I said it earlier, right? But look at this right here. Boom. And I'll make you happier because we have something special at the end Coach Hill's going to talk about. So right here, look at this right here. If you have the football right here, that's the neutral zone, right? Well, the offensive line can't cross this, right? Defensive line can't cross this. That's two lines. It's just something to think about. How many teams are on a football team, right? Someone's going to be like, no, there's only one football team. No, there's, there's three football teams on a football team. There's a offense. There's a defense. And there's a special teams. And then the other thing, too, is when you close up practice or something, what did they learn each day? Or what did you want to learn each day? Ask the players what they learned each day. I know if they, even if they're older, ask them what they learned. Did they understand what you're learning, what they are learning? Because if they didn't understand what they are learning, then you wasted all that practice time for nothing. Can the student athlete, and I don't mean to call them student athletes if they're men in the men's team or women's team, but can they explain the material that you've given them to learn? Remember, the read and write for VARC is you have the, have the players write the plays out, okay? I'm not a secretive person. I'll give you my playbook, right? I'm not secretive because you still have to learn how to stop it, right? But at the end of the day, if the player writes it down, that could be one way that one person on your team learns better than anyone else. So definitely, you can use this chart whenever you want. The learning triangle is very simple. I implemented it in 2017 when, well, I created it before this, but like we started using it at Boylan two years ago. We literally implemented two years ago. Our point total has gone up from, I believe it was, you can look at it. It was like 390, 385 to 45 this year. Before that we were 294. Our defense has gotten better. Last year, I think we scored like the first nine games. We only had under, we were like a hundred points for nine games that we were scored against. Did we play good competition? I would say five of the nine teams were good competition. So people could be like, well, you play all people that are bad, right? But we use things like this in practice for 20 minutes. I get time to do what this is right here, plus the insertion schedule, okay? We talk about the top of the triangle, positions. We teach everybody every position, not how to do it, but where they line up and who they're blocking. Because anyone that's an offensive or defensive person is this. You have different formations that you line up against, you have different formations you line up to run plays. You, need a, you cannot block an ISO against a 3-3 defense the same as a 4-4 defense. Is that correct, Coach Hill? Because the guy's going to – your chess piece, I call it, is going to be at a different spot. So we teach positions. Another thing we teach is gaps and holes. Now, like I say before, and I've said this a long time ago, if you have older players, you might not need holes. You might just need plays or gaps. Because when you tell a young kid to run through a hole and that hole closes, does the kid have the football intelligence to go around the hole or will they try to go right through the hole? Okay, that's a very good point. So if you have that kid that goes through the hole all the time, you might not want to have holes called. The biggest one I love, and they should be teaching right at five years old, defensive line and linebacker techniques. It's gigantic. You got to teach these right away. I'm a bum Finless guy. I don't know what you are, Coach Hill, if you're bum or you're Bear Bryant. But I'm definitely a Bum Phillips guy just because how Bum Phillips did it. It's all together the same. It doesn't change the seven, eight, nine. So, and then when you do this and you complete your triangle, you will learn how to run the football better, pass the football better, or defend the run or defend the pass better just by doing this triangle. And we're going to go over that right now. Okay. The strongest shape, known shape in life is a triangle. Coach Hill, do you know where I got that from? You're going to laugh your butt off. No, sir. Boss Baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's from Boss Baby. The book that you see here is this one right here. I don't mean to do a little selling pitch. That's 582 pages of stuff. I'm all about giving free stuff out, and you're going to get free stuff from me because I'm going to give Coach Hill. I'm going to email him the ones I use for my company, and then I'm going to try to make some for your coaching convention the insertion schedules that we're going to talk about in a second. I discuss more of this topic more in depth in my football green book, in all my books I have. I create a learning triangle to help coaches bridge the learning gap by communicating football concepts in a simple and effective way. So no matter what level they are, that's what we do. Okay, positions. 
These are the positions that are in the book, how I talk about them. Offensive line. They're first, not because of the order of the alphabet, because they're the persons that make everyone else look good. I don't care what anybody says. I played quarterback indoor. I played quarterback in Division II, Division III, at high school, never in grade school, though. Okay? So I'm telling you right now, as a quarterback, if it wasn't for my offensive line, I wouldn't even be alive today. Okay? And I see people say, well, what do you want, a stud running back or a great offensive line? If you have a, good, a great offensive line, you're going to move the ball. I'm just telling you that right now. Just run wedge and you're fine. Running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends. If you use H-back, whatever, whatever terminology you use, this is a chart you should make and put your guys in and tell them that. Defense. Defensive line. Linebacker, but there's multiple linebackers, right? Cornerbacks. Safeties. Now, I could tell you about every different ways we name linebackers at our place before I was at. But I'm going to tell you right now, they have Mag, Sam, Will. That's what everyone uses. The biggest thing right now everyone does with their linebackers is number them. I love numbering my linebackers. One, two, three, four, five. We'd run a three, five. You say the number, you blitz. It's that easy. Okay? And you could do things where your linebackers, you could do, like, if you just number your players, it's so much easier. Long uh, special teams. If you are a national team coach, I'm going to give you the best advice I ever got. Are you ready for this? Your first player you take on your national team is your long snapper. That has to be your first player you take. I don't care whatever. You, I don't want to hear someone say, well, we need this quarterback. We need this runner. You know, if you ever punted the ball and that long snapper threw the ball over your head, under your leg, or you lost a game or it gave up a score, I'm telling you right now, if you're a national team coach, that's your number one position, the long snapper. If you want to know number two, I mean, have to be on your staff. I'm just kidding. But that's what I would tell you. Okay, that's the free word of advice. Free advice. Okay, short snapper, punter, kicker, and returner. Those are the things right there. I completely agree with that, Coach, uh, on the long snapper. I mean, I've done that from a national program point of view and also when we've ran all-star programs as well. Like The long snapper is so, it's so a, important. It's a key. And – and they're like, coach, well, we can't find a long snapper. Then if you look at my volume three book, you have the shotgun snapper, snap the ball to the PP, you flip it back and you punt the ball. There you go. There's two tips you just learned from me today, just on the positions part right there. So that's go. That's awesome that you're like that, Coach Hill. Okay, here we go. Gaps and holes, okay? Very simple. You have center, A gaps, right? And I would just get a hose, cut it out, or do colored cones. At our practice at Boylan, we do, we lift, coach is in the meeting, he does his read and write, visual, he does a visual, an audio, and he makes the kids read and write it, right? We go to practice 45 minutes later, after the 45 minute chalk talk, that's half offense, half defense, we come on the field, I have cones set up, different colored cones, center is red usually, because I mean stop, right? Green is guards, and yellow, because there's two of them, is tackles. That's what I do for my colors, or I do blue for tackle sometimes. It just matters what kind of mood I'm in. I tell my kids, my cone colors are my mood. It's like a mood ring. So you teach them that, then they know the center is A, then B, then C, then D. And then there also is an E gap too, but I don't put that in there, okay? That's what you should do for gap teaching. For offensive playbooks, you have the holes. Now, Somebody like Coach Hill, your team that you probably coached or head coach or coordinator or whatever, you probably seen the holes these ways, correct? You might have used one of those before. I don't. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Yes, so but, top one there. Go ahead. That's what we've used. Which one? We've used the uh, the top one and also the second one down as well. So perfect, right? Different times we've used those. Okay, so you had so you had different coordinators. I guarantee when yes, you sir. did those, right? Yeah. So when you see it. You can look at, okay, so how would a kid learn better, right? So I was taught one way, the top. I was taught the middle. And then I learned the bottom. The bottom's wing T. If you don't know that, it's wing T. So that's how, if you play a wing T team and they're audibling and things like that, that's what they're doing. So just remember that. Don't, see, don't assume when they say 26 lead, you're going to the six hole, okay? The other thing too is if you change your numbering system, 26 is like a belly and fullback dive. That's the thing you got to remember, okay? That's gaps and holes for that point of the triangle. And that's another FBI sheet. 
And all this stuff gets in my, when you, if you ever purchase my book and you order a review, all this stuff you get in copies for your practice plans. Defensive line techniques and linebacker techniques. This is the bottom right corner of the triangle. So we're at the final point of the triangle. <clears throat> I use Bum Phillips. Here's why. If you look at the center on the top for D-line, let's do D-line first. You have a zero. Head up over the guard is a two. It's all, if you notice, it's all symmetrical, I would say. I mean, that's probably not the right word, but that's what the word I use because it's all the same, okay? Outside shade is odd, okay? Inside shade is a 2i, 4i, 6i. Now, if you're a tight end person and you're like, coach, I'm a 7, 8, 9, great, that's fine. But remember this with the kids or the players. If you're a seven, eight, nine, and if you look at my drawing, I have a center, a guard, a tackle, a tight end, and a tight end. So if you play a team like, like Rockford Boylan, I'm telling you right now, in Rockford Boylan, we run Eastern and Western. It's tight end wing, it's two receivers. Love the formation. It's a law of the formation. Because here's what you have to do. Do you want to run strength us over here? Or do you want to pass strength us? And if you want to do one, we're going to do the other. Because once we figure that out, then we're going to go after you. So it's just something to think about. Now, do we run other formations? Yes, we've already put in, in three days of practice, we put in 12 formations. Don't ask me why my head coach loves formations. But I say one, that's why I do the cone thing with the gaps. For 10 minutes every practice, we go over every single formation so they're lined up correctly. Okay? So by doing this, if, uh, Coach Hill, are you a seven nine seven eight nine or are you 6'7"? Six, 7'9"? Six, seven? Uh, seven, nine, nine. Okay, so let me ask you this question. If you're a seven eight nine guy and you have that extra tight end, what do you call that extra guy that's that wing? Do you just call it a ghost nine or what do you call it? Yeah, we, we'd probably be playing <clears throat> that from a linebacker technique anyway. So okay. that second tight end, we wouldn't be um, we'd be calling it from a linebacker point of view. Got it, okay. But if you don't and you shift your line over because you have to, or if you got unbalanced, yeah. it's huge because then the kid doesn't know because the, even an adult would look over and be like, uh, how do I line up for it? But if you're going to anchor it with the linebacker, that's great. Anchor it. But you should still give them a exact number. If you give them a spot on the map to go to, like I tell my kids in football at high school, if I give you a spot on the map and you're there and we outnumber people, we're going there. So it's just something to think about. Linebacker techniques are huge. I, you know, I don't know if Bum Phillips created this or whoever did it, but it's, it's phenomenal whoever did this. I tried to look it up. I couldn't figure it out. Every linebacker technique is just add a zero to it. And it's the exact same thing as above. So the D-line team, the defensive line know if they have to line up, right? I don't care what anybody says. The middle linebacker is the quarterback of the defense. If your middle linebacker is not the quarterback of the defense, he's not, he should not be your middle linebacker because he needs to know everyone running. Now, if you're that person like me where you have a front, front, like the front seven have a call and the back have a call, that's fine. But they should know everything. The D-line, once the D-line here, like over, they're done, right? Over, they're done. And you'll see that in a little bit. Over, they're done. Boom. And then if they hear over this, over pinch, and then they over pinch, they know they're there. After that, they know that everything's gone. Run and pass. The triangle summary is very simple. By learning the three points of the triangle, players will be effectively at their position. If you've ever had a player line up wrong in a play, you know what I'm talking about. And I would definitely recommend you trying this this season. Do it in a Zoom, okay? Know how to run plays and defend plays. And Coach Hill, here's what I'll tell you. I will be more than happy, just like this. I will give up my free time for free for the first coach that says, hey, Coach, I want you to do a Zoom and do this with the players. So I just want you to know that right now, Coach Hill, you can't do it because you're already here. But if anybody's listening to this and you want me, contact him and I'll be more than happy to do it for free for you, one per one team, okay? Now we go into the arch. I usually ask if there's any questions. If you have any questions, make sure you're asking. I know Coach Hill's asking them, but if you have any, I'll give you my information below and make sure you ask any questions you want, okay? The arch is something I created a long time ago. We're driving back, I saw the St. Louis arch, and I'm telling you right now, all the shapes I got were from my kids. You might, people make fun of me and that stuff. Just like I, the DEA, right? When I got FBI football intelligence, I thought of DEA. And then I started getting all the other stuff. Like our IRS, initial receiver space. That's the window, I call it. DEA, depth, how far they're back. 
eyes, alignment. That's for DBs, you know? So when I tell my quarterbacks, look for their DEA, they know exactly what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> the arch is this, insertion schedules, practice plans, playbooks. What does that all mean? I'm gonna tell you right now. Here's the insertion schedule. The importance of the insertion schedule is very simple. If you've been around football for a while, I'm sure you remember the days of when coaches just stretch players, ran a few laps, and go straight into scrimmaging the rest of the practice. Maybe that's you. If that's you, remember, you know what my name is, okay? Those days are over. What do players actually learn during practice? Nothing. This is why myself, Anthony Stone, Coach Stone Football, invented these. Why, an insert, why have an insertion schedule? It's very simple. An assertion schedule is an important piece of every coach's plan and will make life so much easier, especially at the youth level because coaches don't spend time together. They hardly ever do it. Even at, you know, maybe in, in UK, you don't get that time together. You can make a Google Drive and put this on there and then fill it in, okay? It is a list that must be completed within a certain amount of time. The items on the list are necessary steps that will lead to your football success. An insertion schedule is a useful tool when it comes to teaching the game's most important all player skills, including tackling and turnovers. So here's my thing I would tell you. When I'm coaching youth, it's all about the fun. Don't care about winning. I really don't. When it comes to playoff time, maybe a little bit more, right? I'm not going to be lying to you. Okay, like we won a playoff game. We're, we're doing flag football, Coach Hill. And this team, the week, I just got back from Australia last year. And our, our coach that was taking over for me, our assistant coach, he's like, I don't get it. You score 40 points a game when you're there. And when I'm here, I only score two touchdowns a game. I'm like, it's not you. It's me, I said. It's, it's not like, I'm, I apologize. I never taught you that. He's like, yeah, I know. But you do this and you do this. And the kids all know that. And you say that. And I try to use your code words. And they're like, they don't get it. Because we run no huddle in flag. And then we play the team. We just score like 50 points or 40 points. And, it was, and they beat us because they had better athletes, right? So what did I do? I learned from my mistake. Went to the playoffs. We played them in the first round. I am not going to play shoot them up games with them. Where we're, we're, you know how it is. Like in Texas, games are like 70 to 80, right? You know? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know how those defense coordinators have jobs. I'm just saying, right? But here's what I did. We played them again, and I slowed the game down. I literally like this. this. I called the play. So this. I went like that to my son because my son plays quarterback. And then I waited. I said, the ref told me 10 seconds. And I won with it. We scored three touchdowns. And like, what is that? I forget. I think it's like 20 minute periods, right? So 40 minutes, we scored three touchdowns. Before we were just scoring like that. And they, trust me, they were, we would score in like five plays when I did that. When we scored 50, they would score in one play. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? So we get that. We get all the way to the end. We're tied at the game. There's a minute left in flag. I get one timeout. I don't know if you guys get that in your flag league, but in my flag league, it's one timeout, six on six though. It's not like IFAF rules. But so it is one timeout. I run the ball. I call a timeout because the clock's continuous, right? So I knew the coach because I knew his mentality. He was going to go for it. So then the ball goes all the way down to the other side and they put it. I put my biggest guy that he's, everyone knows is a mean guy. I'm going to tell, I'm yelling at him, you're blitzing, you're blitzing. Well, what happens is the center got scared because last time he got hit by the guy because you know how the center has to move out of the way. Well, the center moved out of the way, and our guy ran right into him. So, And he was, like, all scared. Like, you could tell he was scared. So what we did was, I go, you're blitzing, you're blitzing. And I had my son and my other stud athlete back. And my, I'm not saying my son's a stud. I'm just saying the other stud athlete, Peter, we're back just in case. They, they're going to run the ball. They're going to throw the ball, right, even though they, they, I would have ran the ball. Snap goes up over the quarterback's head, lands in the end zone. Well, if anybody knows in flag football rules, the ball's dead right there. So you know what that means? It's a safety. You see me on video going like this. We win the game. I'm like, we just won. Safety. And the ref looks at me. Oh, you're right. The other team's really mad. The parents are really mad. My head coach looks like he just won the Super Bowl, even though it's the first round of the playoffs, right? We didn't win one game that season because we were just having fun. And the kids didn't, like, get down on themselves. When they scored, they act like they were there before. That's what I would say to you. If you have a bad team, when you score – Act like you've been there before. Don't be think it's the Super Bowl when you score first. If someone scores on you first, don't be like this on the sidelines. 
act like you've been there before by using the insertion schedules at it. Sorry, Coach Hill, it was story time. I had to tell it. Ah, so good. So good. By implementing an insertion schedule, you lay a foundation. Make the program successful. Your athletes will be safer. I guarantee it. Your athletes will likely absorb more of the material that is given to them. They will retain the skill and development for the next level of play. Like I said, again, I'm going to give you these insertion schedules for free. Remember, every level of football is different. So the earlier you lay them the foundation, the better chance you have to improve as an athlete. Here are an example of the offense and defensive exertion schedules. Now, the cool thing about this, it's writable. So you can change it up even. If you don't like my day, date, practice number, D-line skill, linebacker skill, DB skill, level of contact, uh, front stunts, blitz coverage, and the two extra blank ones, you can change it. That was a defensive one I was saying. If you're doing the offensive one, practice, I'm sorry, I should go start up. Month, you just change the month, change the date, change the day, practice number, O-line skill, running back skill, tight end skill, wide receiver skill, quarterback drill, formation, play, motions, passing play, run play, screen play. Now, if you ask me what we use at Boylan, we don't say run play, screen play, or passing play. We call it POD, pass of the day, ROD, run of the day, SOD, screen of the day. And we will screen you till you cry. We will do that in our high school. If you ever want to watch film on us, we will screen you till you cry if you want to play back on us. So when you press us, then we'll run all over you. You want to fill the box up? Great. We'll screen you or we'll pass on you. So we have poisons to pick. This is the offense and defensive one. When I made this a long time ago, I also created the wonderful one that everyone talks about. What? The tackling version. Okay. Okay. No one created this but me first. I can tell you that right now. The tackling and search schedule came out before anybody else came out with all this other stuff. The turnover circuit insertion schedule, the special teams insertion schedule. Why do I do tackling? Coach Hill will tell you best because I know I've seen him on the round tables all the time. If your team tackles well and you hit people, you slow people down. If you don't tackle, well, you're not good. If, and I apologize. Remember, this is Coach Anthony Stone saying this. If you're making your D lineman run 30 yards, like for conditioning, guess what? If they do that in a game, they're not very good. <laughs> Your D lineman should not be running 30 yards this way. Maybe 30 yards back and forth trying to catch somebody, but not 30 yards one way. Your turnover circuits are huge. Like if you do a tackling circuit like everyone's saying, great. Do a turnover circuit too or add it to your repertoire with tackling because if you get that plus one and plus two, you're winning. Remember, more possessions – is more obstacle scoring, okay? I should say more possible scoring. I, Sorry, typo. Here we go. So, and the other thing, the most important one, even though I used it last, it's the actually the most important one, the special teams insertion schedule. Use it. You'll see it in the next slide or the next couple slides when I do practice plans. Use it at all. If you, you know, now someone's like, oh, that's a lot of work, Coach Stone, but understand this. Your coaches are your little minions, I call them. If you have those coaches that are really good, I don't mean to call them minions, but if they're really good, there are some guys that are all into this. Plus, if you fill it out once for the first year, then you can go back and say, okay, if we'd have done this differently, what could we have done better, right? People are all about grading tackles and things like that. Great. Grade everything, though. Don't just do tackling because if you don't line up right, Coach Hill, and you tackle well, it doesn't matter. Am I right by wrong by saying that? Line them up right first. Here's the thing. Now we're on practice plans. Here's what I would ask you. And Coach Hill, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but we're going to ask you right now. Do you know what you had dinner five years ago on this day? Not a chance. Okay, of course you don't, right? That's, right. That's why I left it up there like that. That's why utilize, utilizing a practice plan helps you record what you do and allows you to be a more effective coach. Put it on a Google Drive and then make sure you have Google, you know, the Excel version of Google and you can put the practice numbers on the, sh on the sheets on the bottom and then just go across and fill them in, okay? To be an effective coach, do that. That's just like an assertion schedule. We have an assertion schedule for every start of the season. I should, oh, it's, oh that's one of my practice plans. I should show you one of our boiling ones. Okay, I put these all out because I don't want to keep you guys forever by them all clicking down. What needs to go in a practice plan? It's very simple. Pre-practice. 
Garbage cans are the best thing ever. If you don't have them, get them. If you don't have, and if you want to see what my utility towers look like, they're phenomenal. I'm not lying to you. I created them from insides of the tackle tubes. I'm still trying to get a company. Hopefully, Rydell is listening to this. Okay. FW, what's that? That's functional warm up. Whatever you want to do, functional warm up, you got to do that, right? Specials, the hidden yardages, doing special teams pods like I do in my books. It ta- all this stuff is like in depth in my books, all of my books, not just my green book. Special teams is huge. Make sure you're winning that hidden yardage. Pre practice walkthrough, like I told you before. This is exactly what we do at Boylan, what you're seeing. Okay, when I came to Boylan, we do all this stuff now. We do do, with the social distancing stuff, I can say we don't do this right now. Does that make sense, Coach Hill? So with COVID, I'll tell you, well, we can't do that. We can't do that, right? So pre-practice, we already talked about what we do. Boom, go over cans. FW, the kids stretch. While they're stretching, we have quarterbacks under center and uh, shotgun snap just in case it's raining outside because we're, we're a spread team. Special hidden yardage, we go over, like, the long snappers are going over, stuff like that. After that, we go pre-practice walkthrough where we have, like, defense over here, offense over here, but they're not by each other. They're social distance. If they play both ways, then we just do all offense. But they're spread out six feet apart. Indie drills, right now we're at 45 minutes for offense, 45 minutes for defense, because that's what we have to do, because we have to be social distance. And beginning of the season, you have a ton of indie, indie time. Uh, group is when I have like running backs, quarterbacks together going over run stuff because I coach both positions. Uh, or like yesterday, Coach Tolan and I with Boylan, we had the varsity on this field and the, and the JV on this field because we can't be together for COVID thing. And we would just do RVAs. Instead of Skelly, we do RVAs. Um, scout D versus offense, we don't do that right now. We do do the cone drill, but with COVID going on, we do offense. We use my utility towers and garbage cans for the whole defense and everyone picks them up. And it's really funny. I don't know if you think this is funny, Coach Hill. We have two coaches with like, like, like two uh, spray cans, bottles, and they like open them up like guns and they shoot them. So after the kid's done, it's like, and then once all 11 are done, next plays ran. That's how we do it. Same thing for offense. The only difference is with offense, if we knock a bag down or touch a bag, if they're doing their rips or whatever, they're, the D-line are doing their moves, that's when that coach comes. He likes that way better, he said, because those two coaches like work more on the offense, they said. Um, we do team just like we do, just like scout right now, because we can't be together against each other because we're not allowed to with IHSA rules. We don't condition right now by games. We do weights before everything. So right now we do weights before where I do conditioning games. And I have those in my green book, in my uh, skill manual book and things like that. Icebreakers, we always do. We do that the first couple practices just to find out where they're from and things like that. Every practice we close. And then when we close, we ask every player at the high school, we, we usually get position coaches together after we, we come together as a group, just the varsity. And we talk about like a little business items, what you learn. And then the individual coaches meet with their players and then, hey, what did you learn today? Or what do you want to learn? And I have a little book. I don't have it on me now, but I have a waterproof little book that I use with a waterproof pencil. And I write that in there because you never know if it's raining or not. Film session, we don't do yet, but we do that during the season. We do that before and after practice with coaches only, after practice, of course. Uh, and then players are in the classroom or the auditorium. So, but we have not done any film session yet. Other tips for practices. Please do this for, favor for me. Don't have circus lines. Don't have people lined up or watching a drill. Like I see it on Facebook all the time. They're all like, oh, look at these. This is why my camps are so successful. If you ever did in one of my camps, nobody's standing around. Okay, even if we're doing a tackling circuit, everyone's working. I don't want to hear someone say, well, they have to they have to watch. Yeah, they can watch by you demonstrating it or have five kids on each like each triangle demonstrate, but they all should be going at once. Coach, I don't have enough equipment. Do you ever buy swim noodles? Swim noodles are a buck and five below. You can buy cases of them, all the thing. Use that to duct tape. You can make you can make half rounds out of them, you can make tackling things out of them, whatever you want to do. But remember, you got to spray them though. I don't know if that's – is that you, Coach Hill? Can you, you guys can't use bags yet, right? Yeah, we can't use bags or anything yet, so it will so be. everything's uh, taught on air. Everything's on air, taught on air. air. That's even better. So there's no reason everyone shouldn't be going at once. Does that make sense? And the thing with the, my grid I made, I made an advanced grid, an advanced grid 2.0 in my older books, in my coaching edition book, where you make literally a checkerboard and the players stand social distance away. If you want to, I can send you a picture today of practice, Coach Hill. Just give me a – Give me a text. I, now, remember, the, the grid you'll see is 1.0, the advanced grid. But, like, it's phenomenal. If you have cones, it's phenomenal for coaches. 
when you, every time for practice, you need to have other areas to approve on. What do you need to fix after each game? Which player needs improvement? Okay, don't be down on the player. Be like, he sucks. If you only have this guy that sucks, then you better, you, this guy down here, that's your backup. And you saw he's a lot smaller. You're not going to like that player. Because you know how it is. Some teams have first string and then they go down to third string or fourth string for a backup. So teach them that. Work on plays to improve your chances of scoring. Sorry, cut off. Have a plan to hit on a couple of skills and drills. Agility, tackling, blocking, conditioning. Now, why do I say agility first? Because guess what? If the kid can't bend over, how can he get into a stance? That's one thing you got to think about. So we all want to talk about tackling all the time, but if you're not agile, you can't bend over. How can you get into that stance? You know, it's just something to think about. I don't mean to be rude. I'm just saying. Here's a type of flag practice I did. I just use my old ones. The people are always like, well, why can't we see your new ones? I go, that's what puts food on the table. I'm not trying to be rude, but it puts food on the table for me. I have five kids, so I apologize. <laughs> so if you could buy a book, that'd be great. <laughs> so this is a flag practice from 2015 with my, my son when he was little, you know? And all we did was look at it. We played, we stretched, we did FW. We played a flag game, Modify Sharks and Minnows. Guys, if you, even the adults, play, play Sharks and Minnows where like all the people are here and one person here, they'll have fun because they'll run more than you telling them run, run those ladders. You know, we used to call them suicides. Like, you know how it is. Coach Hill probably knows this. There are some players you had on your national team, conditioning would come, they're like, oh, my leg hurts. My leg hurts. Or coach, I'm, you know, I got to sit out this one because I need to be ready and fresh. But you'll be fresh for Saturday, you know, when you play, but you can't run on a Tuesday. You see my point? And that's why I tell my players, if you're injured and you got a bum wheel, guess what? It's July. We don't play until September, so I'm good. You know, get healthy because when you come back, then I'm going to ride you. You know, draw plays and go over sideline stuff. That's what we did. You know? That was practice six, too, if you look in the left corner. We went over plays, and then we go over play, defensive plays, and then we scrimmage red and yellow. And then if you look in the bottom, we had the, the names on the dynamic stretch. And then I would have my groups on the left side where my special, my special packages were. Here's an old tackle one I did back in the day where we had four-hour practices. You know, we can't do those anymore, right? But this would be the second part of it, and this was back in 2007. And am I a yeller? Yeah, I used to be a yeller. Am I still a yeller? Yeah, but I don't yell as much. You know, and that would be like, so we would do off, we'd do defense first because I always said defense is more important, you know, defense, the offense and like that, but I didn't really care because I was a head coach. And you know, you know how it is, Coach Hill. When you're the king, it's great. So you were, we're defense over here first because it was 3A, but then 4A would be, we'd flip it and do offense first so they, they didn't get upset with me. And look at what we just did. This was the third practice. So this was the third offensive practice. This is what we did. Stance, review stuff, throw to receivers, now, I know it looks like Chinese to some people or Japanese or American or UK, however you want to call it, but it just breaks it down to the T. And here's what I say. If you don't get through it, you highlight it. You highlight it because there's some stuff in practice you can't get to. And that's when you use your insertion schedule to review stuff every day, the day before. So if you look at the bottom, this is a great point I want to make. If students don't listen, then they run. So remember earlier I said, don't do that. But in 2007, I was that coach that made people run. Now, the other thing too is, and I still believe this today, if you don't call, you're late. Does that make sense? And no matter if it's an older kid or a young kid, a phone call is, how long does a phone call take, Coach Hill? Five seconds? Yeah, if not, yeah. Yeah, if you want to call me 10 minutes before you're going to be one minute late, I'm fine with that. That's now, with my middle school kids, these practices, you know, school was like, there so we were like the kids were there for school so be aware of that how are you late for a practice that we don't even have pads on yet okay so every minute you're late that's a bear crawl you owe me and i'm and i was at an inner city school and i'm telling you right now and i know i don't know if you have one for this hill coach hill culture is huge that's the biggest thing nowadays if you have a great culture and they buy in you're great once they buy out of it what happens to that coach they're gone Okay, this is from the Chicago Force, a woman's practice plan. Um, if you notice, the practice plan looks alike. I, I was on the defensive side of the ball here. But if you notice, like, all my stuff is like, bam, 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 bam. And then Coach K's stuff, you just have basic overview and things like that. So, like, Chalk Talk was 10 to 10.30, 10 to 10.25. And then 10.25 to 10.50 was my Chalk Talk. And that was the first practice. And that was called the rookie practice. Because I always call my first practice rookie practice. 
because everyone's a rookie. Everyone, I don't even care if you played for me for five years. Everyone's a rookie because you know how it is, Coach Hill. Your assistants will change sometimes like this, especially if they get good and they want to fly off with their little peacock wings. And let, like one player, one coach said to me, I just want to be a peacock and fly. Well, you're not ready yet, but I'm, but he didn't go. You know, I, I'll be honest, when I'm, when I'm ready for you to go and I think you can do it, I'm going to send you away. Cody Kazaza, you know, Matt Davis. Matt Davis is coaching college football right now. Cody Kazaza is a strength conditioning coach right now. He, you know, when he, they fly away, they're gone and they'll come back only when I get a head job, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, USA football practice was in 2010 when we were in Sweden. Um, this is a practice that we did at in Texas. If you look at it, how we did it was we had two coaches for defense only. Okay. We only had w really one coach for offense, but we had two. Okay. And if you notice, like Coach K just ran it all there. And mine is broken down like this, 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 this. And then we just went very basic. And if you always see there, garbage cans. Even in 2010, I was using garbage cans. Greatest thing next to equipment. You know, people want to buy you these, these like, like these, these tubes that are like 80 pounds tall. They're great and everything. Yeah, they're realistic. But let me ask you a question. Where are you storing it? Where are you going to store these bags? And I'm going to tell you right now, Coach Hill, I don't know if you do this, but I guarantee if you bring home a new piece of equipment in the, and you put it, you don't put, it doesn't fit in the garage, is your, is your significant other going to be upset? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the front room then, and she's not really happy. <laughs> No, and it's like, hey, honey, look, it's a table. Let's, it's not a table. She's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got tackle tubes. I literally got two of them from Tackle Tube USA, and they're awesome. If you don't have a Tackle Tube USA tube, I'm telling you right now, I don't mean to plug them. Get them because those ones, they they are tough, and they don't break down where the other ones are all loosey goosey and stuff. Okay, I put them in my house. I put them as a thing, and I put a lamp on top of it. I thought she would buy it, right? You know, it's like one of those things for the Christmas story. And then all of a sudden, my kids are sitting in it and having fun, jumping on it because they're like, "Dad, you said these don't these don't break down, so we can jump on them." And then I'm like, "Okay, let's just take them out to the garage. We're good." Now they're stored at boiling, so my wife's even happier, like Coach K says. All star practice, same thing. If you look at it, the right side I did all defense. The left side was Coach Suggett and A Train, uh, and this was a thing in 2010. So I usually show like every 10 years I show practice plans, you know, that are tackle. I apologize. But that's how we went over with those practices. We had two practices. That's our second practice. And that's all we did. And if the kids, if the players, if the ladies know what they're doing, we're gone. If the boys know what they're doing, we're gone. The men know what we're doing, we're gone. And if you notice on the bottom, I always put notes. Must do pregame, go over groupings on Saturday, 25 minutes, FW, boom, 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 boom. Okay, there's no Q&A, right? What, what I'm going to do, Coach Hill, is make sure that your coaches get the insertion schedules of each one. I'm almost done. I just want you to know I apologize. You don't got to apologize for anything. That's all great. All right. So coaching tip, uh, here's for offense. Run an offense that suits your team. Don't run an offense that have athletes for. If you don't have an athlete to run jet sweep, don't run jet sweep. Does that make sense? Number one play in youth football, toss. I don't care what anybody says. Here's what you do. If you have an offensive playbook, these are what you need to do. Now, remember, these are not, if you buy the books, and I apologize, but if you buy the books, they go in more in depth. I tell you when to use them, when don't use them. But personnel packages are very simple. You'll see in my books, the magic number five. Formations, the back formations, the motions. So I don't put them in an order. I put them how I do them, okay? So we go personnel, backwards, motions, shifts, formations, back formations, and then run and pass. And if you do those six things, the honeycomb, you'll have a good playbook. So remember that. If you're doing playbooks, remember, and I don't know if Coach Hill's gonna laugh at me probably, or Coach, Coach John Wise is definitely gonna laugh about me because we talked about this before. This was the first side of my offensive playbook when I got out of college. You know, I was a GA, a quarterback's receivers coach, and I thought I was the greatest thing next to This was my first playbook for offense. That's my first playbook, I'm not lying to you. You know, that was just for offense too, nothing else. And you know what that is? That's 1,225 pages. That's war and peace. So that's what was my first offensive playbook. I've learned a long time now where my playbooks, if my defensive playbook's over 15 pages, it's too much information. I just want you to know that right now. The size of the playbook does not determine how effective you are. Here's a fact for you, and think about this. And some adults are like these grade levels. The level of coaching you are, the amount of time that will keep their attention. 
whatever grade level you are teaching is how many minutes they will have your point of access. Now, I'm not saying every adult, but typical males are at one first grade level, right, Coach Hill? Because my wife always says, quit acting like a kid. So I say, what grade level I am? And she goes, you're like, like a first grader. Well, babe, you talked over a minute. I don't understand that. And then she goes, go do this then. Um, kindergarten's 30 seconds. First grade's one minute. After that, it's go by grade level. Once you get over eighth grade, eighth grade, your time stays at eighth grade. I'm just telling you that right now. Always remember that they are not at the same level as you. Now, I'm not saying they're not the same Madden level. I'm saying they're not at the same football intelligence level as you. If I had like someone come on this Zoom, one of my former players or something, they would tell you, like, we learn a lot, you know? So be patient with your players. Kiss, not keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, small. Keep it simple, small, and you'll love me forever. I'm not lying to you. You'll be like, Coach Anthony Stone knew who he's talking about. Okay. The older the player gets, the bigger the playbook should be. Don't be that youth coach that runs a thousand different plays. This isn't Madden. Always keep it simple. Make sure you run plays that complement the team by assessing your players. If you have fast players and you need to get to the ball to the outside, I'm telling you that right now. If you have a bigger team, ground and pound them. Bring it to them. Our offensive line this year at the high school, I'm praying that we have a season or a modified season. They're all seniors except one. They're over 280 each. Last year, they were all juniors at 240. So I'm telling you, right, and they all can move. So I can't wait. Defensively, for Coach Hill, I know you're a defensive guru. Is that correct? Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I wouldn't say uh, guru, but I'm a defensive coach. <laughs> Always so here's learning. The here's the thing. Coach Stone football calling a, calling a defense, a box technique. You got to have one, a defensive front. A stunt if it's called. A blitz if it's called a coverage. If you make your defense like this, it's awesome. I'm not knocking the NFL player coaches with the 17 different syllable words, but here's what I'm telling you. They are professional athletes that get paid a lot of money. So you have to, you can tell them what to do. We cannot tell our national team players what to do. We cannot tell our women national players what to do our women men's team or junior teams. We can't tell them what to do, but we can teach them by keeping it simple, small and making them go on to the next level. And I'm going to tell you right now, when they go on to the next level and they say, hey, can you come to our game? That's the greatest thing in the world. That's that priceless moment when I get that call from Kayla Henderson and say, hey, coach, can you come to Indiana? And he's a Division One player. I'm sorry, not Indiana, Indiana University. It's Division One NAIA, I believe. Coaching tip, run a defense that suits your team. Don't run a defense that you don't have athletes for. You cannot run a 3-3-5 if you have all big boys, Okay. Because I don't know about you, but Coach Hill and I are not linebackers anymore, <laughs> right? We, we're not going to run down the toss. You know, we could probably, I could probably play DN because of my height. You know, Coach Hill could probably play the other DN. And we can have, he could be the strong and I'll be the weak. But it's not like we used to be. So be aware of that. Okay. So the last couple things, and this is okay, Coach Hill. Uh, this is my resource page. So if you want to go to my website, coachstonefootball.com, these are some things I have uh, for my, um, Website on the bottom, they're my, they're, my, they're my sponsors, you know, and if you ever want to know one, just ask me, you know, there's Second Skull. I have a video for Second Skull if you can watch it. But then after that, these are all things. Uh, Atavis Tackling has a promo code, 3D Dimensional. Athletes Intelligence is a, uh, a, a scanner in the head that says that the kid gets hit, you get a thing. Dragonfly Athletics is awesome. Dragonfly Athletics is free, coach. All you do, all your forms go on there for free and everything. Now, if you do payments... It's like PayPal where it takes like a dollar or two away, but everything else is free. As long as you don't say we want it looking like this, you can like take a form, like say this is a form and you can put the form, upload the form in there. But then if you want something special where they have to customize it, that's when it costs you money. So I'm just telling you that right now. I'm not trying to be rude to my sponsor. They're phenomenal. Phantom Athletics is a ball where you hook it to a door or to a fence. You throw it and it comes right back at you. Oh, yeah. For being social distance, that thing's awesome right now. And there's a promo code in there. FNF coaches is phenomenal. That's a coaching magazine for high school coaches and above. So if you're a youth coach, I don't, I'm telling you right now, even though I love my sponsors, it's not for a youth coach, but it's if the high school and higher level coaches, you definitely want to look in that. The Go Army Edge app is only for America unless you want to set your phone to America. Um, US, I should say. High and tight footballs. I don't know if you ever saw those, Coach Coach Hill. High and tight balls, you hold it, it beeps. 
it, listen, we brought it in three years ago because the second year, my, my fourth year, we fumbled the ball. We brought it in. Our fumbles have went down dramatic, dr dr dramatically. Uh, Just Play Solution, I have a promo code for that. Not on my website, but I do have one if you want it. It's cheaper. The Launchpad Kickoff Tee. Coach Hill, do you want to talk about that really quick? It's right yeah. here. Yeah, so we're uh, Coach Stone has been very kind for us and uh, has got one of the Launchpad's uh, kickoff tees for us. And uh, we're going to be donating that uh, as a reward to one of our uh, BAFCA members as part of the uh, promotion that we're going to run over this weekend with uh, the charity uh, Mind. So we'll be putting all the information out on that. So Coach Stone, we really appreciate you uh, donating that for us and uh, just revolutionising somebody's uh, kicking game with the launch pad. Um, yeah, and, right. let, and the thing is, like, they're a new sponsor and they were very adamant about I, – I didn't have enough time to get more sponsors. Maybe if I come back, I can bring back a bunch of free stuff if I ever come back there. Uh, P2 Bar is a bar that's pretty cool. It's like a, the uh, University of Alabama uses it. PB Athletics is an equipment bag with a water in it, a big time jug. Um, Safe Clip is, goes on the helmets, it's the clips. Uh, Sadler Sports is what I use my insurance for, for my camps. Tackle Bar, you probably know Coach Hills, what Tackle Bar is. I actually wrote a book for Tackle Bar, it's on Amazon. Tackle Tube USA is awesome. In fact, they're in, located in UK, so you can probably get them even cheaper there, Coach. And then watch game film you probably already know of. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna play this video, if that's okay, Coach Hill, and then I'm gonna wrap up with two more slides. Yes, sir. If you can hear it. You hear it? How are you guys? Good, good. good. So what did you bring us today? The second skull cap can be worn under any sports helmet, like football, hockey, or lacrosse. Ooh. The birth of second skull was inspired by my son's head injury five years ago. I saw him hit his head hard on the concrete. I realized that in a split second, our lives could change. That's where the light bulb went off. I'm going to add protection to skull caps and bring it home. Millions of athletes suffer head injuries every year. Federico wants to lower that number with the second skull. Material this thin doesn't look like it'll protect you against much, so we gotta see how it works and then hit it hard. It's linear impact. Our materials absorb the impact and don't let that force or object go through and hit the other side of the material. Second Skull uses XRD urethane molecules to dissipate impact forces. When struck hard enough, the specially formulated molecules in the foam instantly harden. This is how it protects you without losing its shape. A moment later, the memory foam passes back down through the impact threshold and the molecules relax, returning the material to the same breathable and soft feel as before. So this padding has some sort of magical properties. I want to see it work. You know, give it a go. This is just regular foam you'd find inside of the helmet. And this is the magical yellow foam. You have a, a steel ball bearing here. We're gonna actually just drop it on the wood table. So I'm gonna say about here, right? Okay. Now we're gonna go over here. This is the standard helmet foam. Okay. It's bouncy. So it's bouncy, but we didn't hear the thud. Now we come over here. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> what? <laughs> So that's the impact absorption technology at work. <laughs> that is there cool. It is. <laughs> what? It's, you're not compressing just in so that area. Chill. Spreading we don't have to watch the whole thing. We, we need to get some real world. Yeah. Let's get some helmets involved. Yeah, we got to get a dumb. Yeah, we can uh, carry on. That's uh, that I've never seen this before. I'll carry leagues. on. What I'll do is, well, let's see on this thing for a second. What what I say is, you can just YouTube it. The yeah. one thing I have about Second Skull and the reason why I show it at all my conventions is because if I go anywhere, they give me like anywhere from five to 10 skulls just to hand out. And they won that NFL award. And I think those things are amazing. You can use them for any sport. You know, my son wears them for flag football even. You know, next year, he's gonna, when he plays, he's going to wear the headband though. He, he led the skull cap thing. He says when it's really hot outside, he needs to change it up because of the, um, the heat on it. Here are my books, just so everyone knows. There's uh, the six tackle books. The flag book is the largest flag book of all time. Like no one has built a flag book bigger than that. Uh, it has also, if you play flag with blocking, it has that in there too, just so you know. There's the tackle bar book we talked about earlier. For clinic books, for glaciers or zooms, there's a white book there. The junior edition book, it's like only 100 pages. And then my mom's edition book. There are two more books coming out recently. I cannot announce them yet just because, just in case a company that I know might take ideas. So just going to say. So... You can all get them on Amazon. Every book includes content when you do it, okay? Um, so this is me right here. 
Uh, I know I don't have any questions right now, but if you want to email me stuff or if you want to scan for my author, my uh, Amazon author page, it's that green one, the barcode, or my, for my website, you can scan there or just go to my website and you can look at everything. My Twitter handle, if you want to follow me, is right there. My Facebook, if you don't know how to get a hold of me, you can just get a hold of me. Just find someone that knows me and then you can just ask for a request. Um, but I want to thank Coach Hill. I want to thank the whole British American Football Coaching Association for having me on. And, you know, I love your three E's, Coach. Your three E's are phenomenal. I don't know if you want to ever hashtag, hashtag three E's, but I think that, or just hashtag EEE. -E -E. But I, I think what you guys do is over there is great. Uh, I appreciate when you guys invited me down years ago. I hope to come back soon and when this all clears up if you ever need me to come out but i would love to love everything and thank you for having me uh coach thank you very much for that i really really appreciate it and uh just so much knowledge there and and just so many that so many things that kind of resonate um with kind of just making sure that we are fundamentally sound and from a coaching program point of view that kind of all the boxes are ticked to enable our athletes to be as successful as possible. And that's really what we all want really is the, um, to develop players and develop athletes and, uh, and develop young men and young women, both on and off the field. So that's great for us. Um, the, the one question that I've got is really sure. just on the um, insertion schedules. Sure. Um, I kind of, I love that idea and it's a great kind of opportunity to, to self review as well. And um, kind of week to week of kind of, what we've had installed and um, has it made an impact or is it something that we need to review that we haven't done before? And um, do you share that at all with kind of uh, players, especially kind of a high school level or with kind of national programs that have you shared that with any of the players on, on what's coming up and, and what's going to be delivered? Yeah. So what I do uh, now, I'm not saying my, like a staff, right. But like yeah. myself personally, look at my little notebook. I have like, if you're a coach, make sure you have a notebook, have uh, one of those, those plastics. So if it rains or something like that, have those on you. So if it does rain, you can put it in a practice plan, but I, I share it all the time with all my coaches and all my things. So for offensively, our offensive staff has it at Boylan and uh, coach catch is really great about it. Cause you know, you know, I love that having the title of co sometimes co-offense coordinator, sometimes I'm not because we don't, I don't run the offense. We run it together. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So like, it's not false advertisement. If I say I'm co-offense coordinator or offense coordinator, if I say the full, I always say it too. If someone says, your office coordinator, well, I share the play calling with our coach. If I'm on, he stays. If I'm upstairs and I'm on, you know, he's going to give me the reins, you know, like we did a, with one team we did where we ran for like 300 yards in the whole second half. Um, but yeah, I share it all the time. Uh, the biggest thing I do after games, I don't know if you guys do this or any coach that's listening, after a game, no matter what the game is, win or lose, I'm watching film right away. Or I'm, I'm writing down notes when I'm on the bus away or whatever. And, you know, the one thing I have, and this is my little dorm, my wife calls it, this is where I watch all my stuff. I'll even watch it on TV with my Apple TV because it's a bigger screen, even though I'll like do this stuff on my computer while I'm watching it, is just doing it. I know people like to like put it in huddle or put it in watch game film or put it in uh, team extreme or whatever they call it now or quick cuts. But at the end of the day, I still am old school. Where I like to break it down and I insert all the data from the game before. So if I'm offense, I insert all that data that I make my little call sheet. If you go to my website, you'll see it on a huddle blog, what I do up in the box. But I fill that in all after the game, even though we meet as a, like a staff to have fun, win or lose. I'm always on there. I'm that computer geek still, even though I'm at this old age, when all the young coaches are like, you know, eating and stuff, everything. And then they always ask, hey, are you gonna eat? And they'll, they'll bring me an apple or, or a, a pop or something, you know, things like that. But yeah, I share it with everyone. Like my quarterbacks know, Today we had the high and tight balls out. Um, so we're going to do our zone read with it. Imaginary zone read because of COVID. Yeah. And once, once they tuck it away, that ball should be beeping for that 10 yards because they're running to that cone for 10 yards. So yeah, I do share it with everyone. Cool. Thank you very much, coach. Much appreciated. Um, definitely going to uh, hook you up with, uh, to try and get you on board uh, with sharing some more information. And uh, hopefully uh, when all this passes, we'll um, maybe get a, a smaller convention at the kind of January time, or maybe just get back to our normal convention in uh, July next year. But we'd love to have you uh, back over at some point. So uh, we can just keep talking and, uh, and look at um, getting you back over here. That'd be great. Well, thank you very much. And Wayne, here's what I would tell you. If you have any athletes that are great in grades and good athletes and good citizens, and they want to come over to the U S I'm more than happy to point them in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? So if you have any coach that are listening to this, 
And I, I'm not, listen, I don't want nothing in return. I'm just telling you that right now, because this is about kids' futures. So at the end of the day, I'm not those recruiting sites or things like that. If you have a kid that's good and he's a like a division three or division, don't, don't give me a division three player. That's a division one player. Does that make sense? Coach Hill. Yes, Cause if I go, if I do that and I go to this coach over here, then I can never use that coach again. Thanks. So I just want you to know that if you have a player that's interested or whatever, or maybe he needs a kick in the bud and he sends me something, I can send it off. I'm more than happy to do that for you guys too. So just so you know. Cool. That's great. Thank you very much, coach. Much appreciated. Um, have a safe uh, rest of your day. Um, stay cool. safe. Hope your family stay safe and uh, keep working hard and, uh, and sharing the love of football. So thank you very much, coach. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care. Bye everyone.